اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكریم وعلى آلہ وصحابہ اجمعین In one of the books of the Mathnavi Jalaluddin Rumi presents us with the story of a king So what the king does is He makes a fire And an idol And he says Whoever does not bow down to this idol He will die Then Rumi comments And I'm going to quote He says Chun sa zai in buthi nafsu nidal Az buthi nafsash buthi di gar bizaal مادری بتھا بتھے نفسے شماس زان کے ان بتھ مار مین بتھ اجدہاس which means that in as much as he did not give due punishment to this idol of the nafs I am not going to explain what the nafs is because it will become too long let's just say it's the person okay the self some people translate it as the soul but the more proper translation is self because it includes soul, body and personality then he says because he did not punish the idol of the nafs from this idol of his self the other idol was born which he said if you don't bow down to you will die basically he will kill you then he says Rumi says the idol of your nafs is the mother of all idols madari butha bute nafse shumas the mother of all idols is the idol of your nafs yourself because that idol, the physical idol, is a snake. And the idol of yourself is a serpent. Okay? He goes on, he says that, you know, the idol, that idol is a jug of dirty water. And yourself is like a stream of dirty water. He goes on to talk about it. And then he says, that surat e nafs ar bajui ay kisar hissa ay dozat bakhan ba khak dar har nafas makri udar har makri zan ghar qasad fir'aun ba fir'aun ba so he says O son if you seek the form of the self read the story of hell and its seven gates every moment is an act of deceit and in every one of those deceits a hundred pharaohs are drowned together with their followers the main idea that Rumi is presenting here is that the self is the mother of all idols. Everything comes from the self. If the self is too full of pride or a sense of, you know, I am great, then it leads to things like injustice. Then if someone says something you don't like, well, you know, I'm going to have revenge. If it's not strong enough, then it leads to things like a lack of confidence. The problem is that every false idol that is constructed, he says, comes from yourself. Now this can be taken in two ways. The first is, the self is something, and this is the more popular version that we get, you know, without the self, if you don't get rid of the self, you're not going to be happy, etc. But that is kind of shallow because it's not getting to the actual depth. The self includes things like, you know, what will people say? What will people say can actually stop us from doing something that is right or from stopping something that is wrong because, you know, okay, okay. It can make you not do something that you should do or it can make you do something that you shouldn't do because, again, okay, okay. And so the idea of Tazkiya, the nafs is the mother of all idols and Tazkiya is the cultivation of the nafs in a way that makes it conducive to doing what is right and resisting what is wrong. Okay? So, and this concept of the skiya, it comes basically from the Quran. And the entire Sufi tradition is built on this whole idea. I mean, you can read the history of it or you can consult any of the, you know, uh, chains that still exist and are, you know, connected to the original chains of the Salvo. So, for example, in the Quran, we are told that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had four responsibilities. The first is to teach the book. The second is to teach wisdom. Okay? So teach the book, teach wisdom. Right? Explain the book. And finally, to purify them. Yuzakki him. Purify them. Do their tazkiyah. So it is one of the four primary responsibilities of the Prophet. 
Number one. Number two, the Quran begins with Surah Shams with the verse, Washamsi wa Luha. So Allah swears by the sun and its brightness. And the moon when it follows it. So in very simple words, time itself, you know, day and night. So time is here, routine is here, life itself is here. So, you know, some, this oath is very all-encompassing. Then he says, The skies, the sky, and he who made it. The ground and he who spread it. <coughs> and by the self, he swears, so he swore by, Allah swore by everything he has created, he swore by himself, and now he's swearing by you. This also means that, you know, remember, you are in a way also important. Why? Because he has created you. So there is no such thing as someone who is not important, right? This, the, the person whom you might think is the smallest person in existence, or you know, the most humble person in existence is important because he made him or her. And I swear, Allah says, by the nafs, the self, the self, and he who proportioned it or fashioned it. And he inspired to it what? Its wickedness and its righteousness. So the concept of the skia is that the self, it might be the mother of all idols. But it contains at the same time the potential for good and the potential for evil. In itself it is neutral. But the problem is that it is inclined towards desire. You know, in the nafsala ammarat of the soul. Now, what happens is, Allah says, Tad aflaha man zakka. He who does its tazkiyah, who purifies it, is successful. Waqad khaba and unsuccessful or basically destroyed. Man dasaha is he who buries it. Okay? So the idea is if you do not do the tazkiyah of the self, you are burying yourself. Okay? It's not that you are you have to suppress the self, it's that you have to basically nurture it. The word tazkiyah has three meanings. The first of which is nourishment or augmentation, basically. You, can, uh, you nourish something, you strengthen it. That's the primary meaning. The secondary meaning is purification. The word zakat also comes from here, and that's why it comes from here. But the third meaning which combines all of these is cultivation. Tazkiyah, or the root word for tazkiyah, which is basically zakawa, is used also for cultivating plants, right? So how do you cultivate a plant? You remove all those things from it that would hinder its growth. And you provide it all those things that will make it grow. So the idea of tazkiyah is not, you know, you suppress yourself or something. The idea is you make yourself grow in something that is worth growing towards. And you keep yourself from grow growing towards something that is not worth growing towards, right? So, and the goal is to become someone who can truly be free in a way. The Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladina amu. <coughs> o you who believe, stand firm on justice. Shuhada alillah, witnesses for Allah. Even if it's against yourself. So even if it hurts your benefits, the idea is we do something right because it is right. Not because when we do something right, we will get a Right? The first level of uh, belief would be, you know, or action would be, we do something right because, you know, it gives us some benefit. The second level would be, we do something right for the sake of the Akhirah. But the highest level, according to especially the Sufi tradition, is we do something right for the sake of God alone. There is a verse in the Quran which says, Kulinna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mati lillahi rabbil alameen. Say, my prayer. My, basically my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death, all of it is for Allah. So that's the highest level we are trying to achieve. Now of course that doesn't mean if you're not there yet, so you know, you're not a good person. But the idea is, you know, the goal should be something worth having, right? Uh, so Rabia Basriya, she has a prayer. It's a very beautiful prayer. She says, Oh my Lord, if I worship you, 
out of fear of hell, throw me in hell. And if I worship you, in desire of paradise, make paradise forbidden on me. But if I worship you for the sake of yourself, do not withhold the everlasting beauty from me. So this is the highest rank we are trying to achieve. And then Allah says, Bulaw ala anfusikum. So stand with justice, even if it's against you. Avil walidaini wal akrabin. Or against your parents or the people who are close to you. So the idea is not, by the way, that you start becoming cruel to other people or you start. So sometimes, you know, when you start trying to do something that is right, you can kind of overdo it and be very pushy on other people. You also need to have wisdom. Remember that the four responsibilities that the Prophet had, one of them is to teach wisdom, which is basically, we interpret that the, the knowledge of the book is the Quran, the knowledge of wisdom is the Hadith, but the Hadith is not just laws, it also tells us how the Prophet interacted with different people, how the Prophet was as a teacher, how the Prophet was when someone made a mistake, right? You need to have more than just, you know, the the action or the law, you also need to have the spirit behind the law, which is embodied in his life. Now, another thing that the Prophet said, not because we were talking about the goal of this here, but the idea was you stand firm on what is right, what is true, what is just, right? You fulfill other people's rights, you defend other people's rights, even if it goes against you. Similarly, the Prophet said, وسلم, when someone asked him for what he should do, he said, in, in another version, Say, I believe in Allah, then stand firm. He also said in another in another hadith that la ahadakun, none of you truly believes. Hatta yakuna hawa until his desires are in accordance with that which I have crossed. By the way, this does not mean that you can't have fun. But what it means is basically, you know, there is a limit, and within that limit, you are free. Right? So every vision of the world, every philosophy, by the way, has certain boundaries. It doesn't matter which philosophy it is. You can just try to figure out those boundaries and you try to move past them. That, that philosophy will be very angry about it. Okay. There is no such thing as a purely neutral philosophy. I mean, uh, is, is there anyone here who studies philosophy? Eh? Okay, so, it's fine. But then, okay, if that's the goal of the skia, so we now know what the skia is. We know what the goal of the skia is. Well, the real question is, how do we do it, right? I mean, it, it, it's, you know, otherwise it, it will just be, you know, a beautiful discussion we had and you know but what do we do well we can talk about it at length but we will uh, limit ourselves to one two a hadith okay so this is from Bukhari the Prophet says said that Allah says so it's a hadith Qudsi he says and the most beloved things with which my servant comes near to me is that which I have made obligatory on him obligatory something compulsory. compulsory necessary first he cannot so Allah is saying, the things that I have made necessary, you know, things like praying, etc., they are the first level. There is nothing that brings you closer to me than that. That's what he is saying. By the way, if you think about this, this is very deep. Because, for example, Allah says, Aqim salata li dhikri. Establish prayer to remember me. Which means we're not going five times a day away from, you know, my class or my job. and We're actually going five times towards Allah. Towards God. And the idea is we're talking to him. And we should try to basically slow down. You know, prayer involves slowing down. You slow down, then you pray. If you have anything you want to say to Allah, talk to him. Then come back. So that's a very different way of thinking about it, right? So, and all of the basics are designed in a way to help us deal with some aspect of our nafs as well. I mean, they're necessary. The reason we do them is they're because they're necessary, not because they help us deal with the nafs. But they help us deal with the nafs. For example, fasting helps us with self-control, among other things, right? Now, another, then uh, the Prophet says, that Allah says, and my slave keeps on coming closer to me through supererogatory acts till I love him, which means basically extraversion. And not just worship, extra good acts. He says acts, he doesn't just say prayers. It could include fasting. It could include helping others. Okay, helping others is a form of worship. As long as you're not doing it, so you would become famous for helping others. Right? Uh, then he says that when I love him, by the way, this is Allah saying, Allah is saying, I love him. I mean, what can be more beautiful than Allah loving you, right? So 
So I become his hearing with which he hears. These are the words in Bukhari. So I become his hearing with which he hears, his sight with which he sees, his hand with which he grips, and his legs with which he walks. And if he asks me, I will give him. And if he asks my protection, I will protect him. By the way, this does not mean that he literally becomes your eyes or your ears. But just think about it. You are trying to live your life in a way that you don't hurt anyone. You're trying to live your life in a way that you are constantly aware of what you are doing. That leads to a state of awareness in which everything you are doing is with the awareness that Allah is there. And that is, by the way, what we call taqwa. Taqwa is a sense of awareness. It is not just fear. We often translate it as fear. Fear is one aspect of it. It is fear, love, and hope, all in one. It is a sense of awareness, knowing that Allah is there, right? So that is one aspect. That is the practical aspect. We do what is necessary. We do more. We help other people. We also do extra stuff to build our connection with Allah. We get close to Him. That's one aspect. There is a social aspect as well. In another hadith in Muslim, the Prophet says, Ad-Deenu Nasiha. By the way, Nasiha in Urdu means what? Advice. In Arabic, it means sincerity, not just advice. Advice is called Nasiha because true advice is given out of sincerity. True advice. Then there is some advice which is not true advice. So Ad-Deenu Nasiha, the religion is sincerity. Qulna, and we said, the Sahaba say, Qulna liman, for whom? Sincerity for whom? And he said, for Allah. So sincerity for Allah. His book, his messenger, the leaders of the Muslims and their masses. In other words, the idea of the skiya is not just, just worship. It's more than worship. It is the rights of others. It is also standing up for your own rights when you should. There are some times when you should, and then there are some times when maybe it's better to just you know move on. That's a part of wisdom. In Surah Tawbah, Allah also says that Ya wa kunu Be with the truthful. Be with those who are true. So what, the, what, what have we seen so far? Obligatory acts, extra acts, right? Uh, then rights of everyone, sincerity with everyone, trying to be, obviously. Um, everyone makes mistakes, that's fine. And now, company. Be with those who are true. And finally, we have the remembrance of Allah. There is a hadith which some people have called weak, but a similar quote like that is also found by Sayyidina Abu Darda, which says, لِقُلِّ شَيْءٍ سِقَالَةٍ For everything there is a polish. By the way, سِقَالَةٍ in Urdu we would call it سَاقَل. By the way, سَاقَل is not just the, you know, the kind of polish we have nowadays. You would, in older times, for example, mirrors would be made of metal, and you would polish them. And you would polish them by rubbing them very hard for a very long time. So this is polish that scrapes, scrubs, cleans, polishes, all of that, slowly over time. Okay? This is not instant polish. For everything there is a polish. And the polish of the heart is what? Yeah. It is the remembrance of Allah. There is nothing that protects you or save you, saves you from the punishment of Allah. Then what? Remembering Allah. By the way, there is another story, probably by Rumi or maybe by someone else, I'm not sure. That there was a king and he wanted to make a hall. He wanted to prepare a hall. And so, there were two groups that were most, the most famous for making a good haul, preparing a good haul. And he was not sure which one of them to hire. So he hired them both. He built a wall in the middle and he said, you guys will prepare this half and you guys will prepare this half. And once you have done that, after this much amount of time, we will look at both sides and you will see who is the better, basically, work team, basically. So, one team, what they did was, they ordered all these, you know, gems and gold and all that stuff, and they started preparing the whole place. Dusi side ke logo ne, sange marmar ki sillein mangwaali. 
And all they did all this time was they polished them continuously until the time came for inspection. So the king said, who wants to go first? And they said, go to that side first. So they came here, you know, all the gems, everything. And then, when they were about to go to the other side, they said, we're not going to go there. Break this wall in the middle. Once they removed the wall, the gems from this side were reflected on that side and became much more beautiful than they were on that side. <coughs> the idea of the skia is not something that you just do, you know, and magic powers awakened. It is more like it is something you do for a lifetime. It's a lifestyle in a way. It is a decision, a way to live. And it does not mean that it is necessarily difficult. Like I said, first of all, there can be fun. We have actual hadiths on, for example, the jokes that the Prophet made with some of his companions. There is a lot of very interesting stuff when you actually study it. At the same time, we should remember that the idea of zikr or remembrance is not limited to just, you know, the tasbih. The Prophet in a hadith in Muslim said that everything is, uh, like he mentioned what can be sadaqa. He started with actual sadaqa. He went on to worship. The, sh the summary would be that all good acts or even all acts of kindness with a good intention are sadaqa. They are dhikr. Okay? Even the time you spend with your spouse can be dhikr. As long as, you know, you are fulfilling each other's rights. And number two, you have the right intention. Right? And prayer is dhikr. And the goal of dhikr, according to the Prophet, in another hadith in Muslim, is that you should serve Allah as though you could see Him. Well, he did not say, you will see Him. He said, as if you can see Him. So this is a state of being. And though you cannot see him, he sees you. The highest rank is as if you can see him. And then it is at least knowing he sees you. And for the Sufis especially, and also for many non-Sufis as well, one major thing that really motivated them to turn everything into zikr is another hadith from Ibn Majah, which is Hassan according to some. It says that dunya malunatun wa malunatun ma fiha wa malunun ma fiha. By the way, at first glance, this is a very harsh hadith. He says, the world is cursed, and cursed is everything that is in it. But, illa dhikr Allah wa ma ba Allah. Except the remembrance of Allah and whatever leads to that. The thing is, whatever leads to that does not need to be limited. And dhikr Allah, like we just discussed, is not limited either. Your interactions in this class can be zikr. Can be zikr. We can make them zikr. We can make them a part of the process whereby we come to serve Allah as if we see Him. And at least not that, we come to try to make sure we're not wronging anyone. We are fulfilling everyone's rights. We are filling the rights of our students or teachers or companions or friends. Right? Or, you know? And at the end of the hadith, by the way, after he says, except for the remembrance of Allah and whatever leads to it, he says, O aliman, O muta'aliman. Or a scholar, or whoever is seeking knowledge. Okay? <coughs> there is motivation for you guys as well. Alright? So, uh, that would be it. So, we talked about the skia, number one. What is the skia? We started with the story by Rumi, by the way. The nafs is the mother of all idols. From that, we said, we talked about what the skia is. Removing things that are basically not worth, not worth it. Growing towards that which is worth it. Then we talked about the highest goal. The highest goal is what? God himself. Below that, at, at the very least, being a good person. Doing good because it's good. And by the way, sometimes people say that, you know, you do good and everything becomes fine. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you get tested. There are hadiths that even tell us that sometimes when Allah loves you, He makes things difficult for you. So even that happens. So everyone's test is individual. But the point is, 
that every moment in your life, difficult, easy, good, bad, worship, not worship, study, friendship, everything can become something in which you are having fun even, but you're also remembering the Lord. And it can turn into something, the highest rank of which is what? You serve Allah as if you see Him. And in another hadith, He loves you. And there is nothing more beautiful than that. Right? There is another hadith which says that Allah is beautiful. Inna Allah jameelun, yuhibbul jamal. And He likes what is beautiful. Which means, by the way, that what He says is beautiful. We might sometimes, you know, be confused. We might think something is beautiful. Eventually we realize it's not beautiful. But what He says is beautiful is beautiful. Because he himself is beautiful. He is the most beautiful thing that we can, we cannot even imagine how beautiful he is. That, that's the truth about it. Because, you know, we are limited and he is beyond all limits. So, sallallahu ta'ala ala khari khalqihi, sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad, wa alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, bi rahmatika ya